Now we're going into section 6.3, um, and in section 6.3 we're going to talk about um, life substances, some of the other substances you need besides water um, in order to live, in order to survive, and all that good stuff. Inside this section, we are going to talk about the structure of carbon, and we're going to look at a number of things when it comes to carbon. We're going to look at carbohydrates, we're going to look at lipids, and we're going to look at proteins, and lastly, <coughs> we're going to look at nucleic acids. So let's talk about carbon. Carbon, here you can see carbon on the screen. Carbon has how many electrons in its first energy yeah. level? Yeah. Two in its first energy level, and how many in the second energy Four. level? Four. How many can it have in the second Eight. energy level? Eight. Eight, right? Eight is how much it would like to have in that second energy level level. Carbon has four electrons in its outer energy level. In other words, it has room for four more. Um, so it can form four <laughs> covalent bonds with other elements. And it can also bond with other carbon atoms. So it can form four bonds. It can bond with other carbon. There's a lot of stuff that it can do in terms of bonding. And we're going to look at some of those things today. There are three types of bonds that you get with carbon. The first one would be a single bond, and that's when you, each atom is sharing one electron. So we have a single bond. What's the next type of bond you think we're going to have? Double. double bond. A double bond, we're not just sharing one electron each, we're sharing two electrons. And what do you think is the last type of bond? Triple. You guys are geniuses. Uh, triple bond where each atom is sharing three electrons. And here we have an illustration here of what type of bond is this? Double, 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 one, single, single right? Each atom is sharing one. Okay, so that is a single bond. And here we have a double bond, each is sharing two. And that's how we're going to look at in terms of these illustrations, um, but let's continue looking at carbon. Um, car carbon atoms can form straight chains. That's one of the things it can do. It can also branch. It can form branched chains, and it can also form rings. Here we have a branch chain. We have branches coming off. Um, here we have a ring <coughs> structure, and um, yeah, so we can do a lot of different combinations. Each one of these connections here, that's a carbon. And you can put carbon together in so many different ways to form so many different types of molecules. Um, so it can form a whole bunch of structures. Now when we're talking about the structure of these molecules, uh, we can talk about the simple formula. And a simple formula, for example, of water is just saying what atoms it has and how many of those atoms does it have? Um, so water would be H2O. That's a simple formula. That is a simple formula that you've heard um, probably all your life. Um, another example would be glucose, and that's a little more complex, but it's still a simple formula because we're just looking at the atoms and how many of those atoms we have. So that would be C6H12O6. Everybody say that. C6H12O6. All right, when I told you that I could ask you for, for some symbols of elements and equations, um, this is another one that you can be asked, and you most likely will be asked. Um, so you want to memorize that. What is it again? C12, C6H12O6. C6H12O6. Water is what? Gold is what? Uh, hydrogen is what? Nitrogen. Calcium. Yeah. Calcium. Calcium is what? Yeah. Carbon is? Yeah. Iron is? Yeah. Potassium is? Yeah. Sodium is? Yeah. And is that it? Yep. Gold. We said gold already. But we can do that again. Gold is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good as gold. What about silver? Good Did we do silver? No. no. No, you don't have to know that, but that is AG, in case you were wondering. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have another de definition here, an isomer. An isomer is 
uh, two molecules that have the same simple formula but a different three-dimensional structure. So the arrangement of the atoms are different even though they have the same atoms in the same amount. For example, glucose and galactose are both C6, H12, O6. And here you can see this is actually glucose, but in galactose it's the same atoms, but they're just arranged a little differently. Still got some more to go through. We are now going to talk about molecular chains. Uh, molecular chains are large molecules. We call them macromolecules. Macro meaning on a large scale. Um, so m macromolecules. And an example of a macromolecule would be proteins. Here we have a macromolecule. It's formed by connecting individual um, smaller molecules into chains. So it's like you start with one link, you add another link on, you add another link on, and you just add all these links so that you get a bigger molecule that we call a polymer, or you can call it a macro molecule. Let's talk about con condensation and hydrolysis. Uh, when we're talking about condensation, uh, it's a chemical reaction by which polymers are formed. So we're taking the individual links in the chains and the, the links and putting them together to make a chain. And in that process, we're taking out water. All right, so condensation, you're forming a polymer and you're taking out water. Hydrolysis is the exact opposite. Hydrolysis is a chemical reaction which, by which polymers are broken apart. So we're breaking them apart. In the process, we're adding water. So those are two opposite reactions. If I ask you how a polymer is formed, you're going to say by the process of condensation. If I ask how you break apart polymers, um, you're going to say by the process of hydrolysis. Uh, so let's talk about carbohydrates. Where do we find carbohydrates? Fruits. Fruits. What else? Vegetables. Vegetables. Grains. Anything else? Pizza in the in what, what part of the pizza? No. The dough. So we find them in bread. Potato. All right, all of those things we find carbohydrates. But what in the world are they? Um, when it comes to their chemical makeup, the structural makeup, and so on, um, they are organic compounds um, that is that are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. Here we can see an example here. This is glucose. What does the O stand for? Oxygen. What does the H stand for? Hydrogen. Okay, and the C's for carbon. Every, every time here we have a connection that doesn't have anything else, those are carbon atoms. Okay, so we have carbon, hydrogen atoms, and they are in uh, the arrangement so that we have two hydrogens and one oxygen for every one carbon. So when we had six carbons, how many hydrogens would we have? Um, Twelve. Twelve, right? If you have ten carbons, how many hydrogens would you have? Twenty. 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 How many oxygens would you have? Ten. 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 All right, so two hydrogens and one oxygen for every carbon. You sound so excited when you say that. All right, let's continue. All right, so the simplest type we can have is a monosaccharide. What do you think would be the next one up? Uh, what do you think would be the next one up from a monosaccharide? A poly. Polysaccharide would be many. But what do you think you'd have if you have two? Five. What? Oh, those two. Disaccharide. So we're going to um, look at that. If you combine two monosaccharides together, you form a disaccharide. For example, sucrose is actually, you take glucose and galactose, you put them together, <coughs> and you form sucrose. I mean, glucose and fructose. You put them together and you get sucrose. Yes, you do get that in fruit. So sucrose is glucose and fructose. And then we have, when you combine many monosaccharides together, you can get a polysaccharide. And examples of that would be starch and cellulose. Those are polymers of glucose. You add a bunch of glucose together um, and you form the polysaccharide starch or cellulose. Those are um, two examples. This would be sucrose over here to the right, um, and that would be a disaccharide. Um, so for example, here we have the monosaccharide, which is glucose. 
And then we have a disaccharide. In this example, it is sucrose. We're taking um, glucose and fructose and putting them together. And here we have a polysaccharide. In this example, we're looking at starch. And what this means is that this continues over and over and over. It's a very long chain. <coughs> now we're going to talk about lipids. Um, lipids, what are lipids? Those are the Ooh, fats and the oils. That looks, good. That, looks amazing. that looks good. You guys didn't say that when I had the fruits and the vegetables on the screen. Wait, no. you had fruits and vegetables on the screen? <laughs> We're in America, so we don't eat fruits and vegetables. Is that what you mean? Uh, lipids are fats and oils. Um, they are organic compounds with a large proportion of CH. What's CH? Carbon and hydrogen bonds and less oxygen than carbohydrates. So we have the carbon, we have the hydrogen. We do have some oxygen, but less than we have in the carbo. Hydrates. These are non-polar, so can you mix them with water? Nope. Nope, you cannot mix them with water. Oil and oil. water does not mix, and this is the reason, because oil is non-polar, and... I like there's <coughs> some lime on there, because we have some fruit. <laughs> oh, there you go, right? That makes it healthy. Squeeze over that fresh chicken. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little excited there, huh? I am. That looks <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what those egg roll looking things are. Egg roll. Egg roll? No. <laughs> Why would they have chicken french fries and egg rolls? Why not? That doesn't. Wait, are they egg yeah, rolls? Yeah, they're like potato sticks. Oh my goodness, that's so hungry. This one's cheese. All right, so lipids are non-polar. You mix them with water and they don't mix. You mix them with water and they don't mix. You put them with water and they don't mix. Uh, so why do we need lipids? Why do we need fats? Why do we need oils? They are used by cells for energy storage, insulation, and protection. Okay, so it, it provides insulation um, um, and that helps to protect us against um, damaging your internal organs, for example. It keeps you warm and all those Thing. Uh, lipids, let's continue talking about them. Um, the most common lipids, you can see an example in your book of the most common uh, lipids. They are typically three fatty acids. Those are these three chains here. And they are covalently bonded to one molecule of glycerol. So here we have glycerol. We have three fatty acids that's connected to that glycerol molecule. And that gives us a lipid and that's the most common type we find in terms of lipids. The next um, life substance we're going to talk about, something else that we need, would be proteins. Proteins. Where do we find protein? What is that? Yeah, correct. Meat. Nuts, meat, beans, beans <laughs> eggs, <laughs> the yolk of the egg, and so on. Man, you guys get really excited whenever we talk about meat, huh? Yeah. All right, so proteins. Let's talk about proteins. What are they? Um, they provide structure for tissues and organs. Your muscles have a lot of proteins in them. Um, that's the main component of your muscles. And it provides structure. Um, and it helps to carry out cell metabolism. Um, and by metabolism, we're talking about all of the chemical reactions that are happening in your body. Um, they, are, they are large, complex polymers. They are large, complex polymers made up of carbon, Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes, and usually, sulfur. Sulfur, the symbol for sulfur, have I given that to you guys yet? Uh. That is correct. It is S. You can write that down. That is another one that can pop up on the test. So you want to write sulfur, S. Uh, the building blocks are combinations of amino acids. So here... Um, we take one amino acid, we attach it to another amino acid, we continue attaching amino acids, and we're going to look at that process <laughs> later in another chapter. Um, but you add these, these are the links in the chain. The, the amino acids are the links, you add them together, and you form <coughs> proteins. Amino acids join together with another type of bond, um, which is actually a type of covalent bond, and we call that bond a peptide bond. So you want to write that in there. Now we want to talk a little bit about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that, changes, that change the rate of a chemical reaction. The chemical reactions that we have in the body, 
We said there were a number of factors, four factors, that determine, um, that are going to influence the chemical reactions. Do you guys remember what those are? That's from last class yeah. period. pH. Temperature. Temperature. That's all I remember. What else? It was pH, temperature, there's another one. Concentration. Okay, so the pH, the temperature, the concentration, and there was a final one. The energy. Energy, yes, there we go. You need to have the right amount of energy in order for them to happen. Now, there's one way you can do that. You, anytime a chemical reaction needs to happen in the body, you can heat yourself up. Is that something we want to do? Yes. Yes? No? Right, no. No? no. Oh, yes. No. Are you sure? It's sick if you get <laughs> okay. You don't want to heat up your body every time a chemical reaction needs to happen. So what we need is we need to have these enzymes, and these enzymes can actually help speed up a chemical reaction. They are involved in almost all metabolic processes, and as I said, they speed up chemical reactions. So here we have something that needs to be broken apart. Here we have an enzyme. That substance comes into the enzyme, the enzyme splits it apart and makes it easier for that chemical reaction to happen. All right, so those are proteins. We have one more substance to look at, one more macromolecule or one more polymer. Okay, nucleic acids, um, those store cellular information in the form of a code. And they are polymers made up of individual subunits that we call nucleotides. So the subunits for these polymers are nucleotides. And these consist of C. What's that? Uh, uh, H is uh, O, uh, o uh, N uh, and P. Phosphorus. Um, so those are the ones that make up nucleotides. And they, of course, make up our DNA. You can see an a illustration <coughs> of DNA no, there. All right, nucleic acids have three parts. Number one, we have a base. Number two, we have a simple sugar. And number three, we have a phosphate group. And those make up the nucleotides. You can see those individual ones here. And here we can see the nitrogen base, the sugar phosphate, and that makes up the DNA that we see in those structures. So in review, we have looked at the structure of carbon. We have looked at carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and lastly, we look at nucleic acids. That is the end of the section. I need to give you your homework, and then you are free to leave. <coughs>